Okay guys, uh, welcome. We're going to start this lecture series with um, a basic walkthrough about EKGs and how they work. Um, but we're going to start off with the normal electricity of the heart. If you don't have a good foundation, you're gonna, we're going to lose you as we go through our different sections of this uh, tutorial. So this EKG lecture series is five parts. And um, <clears throat> so we'll just start off with the basics here. The first little thing we need to clarify is that the understanding is everybody understands that in a cell, it's mostly negative on the inside and positive on the outside. And that is a product of having a bunch of phosphates inside the cell, proteins, and so forth and so on. Um, <clears throat> if we were to take this cell and stack a bunch of them together, we would end up with kind of a tube of um, cells and with the positives on the outside and the negatives on the inside. And <clears throat> if I were to take the same tube and and um, put an action potential here, then the wave of depolarization would start from that point and then move outward in both directions. And it would spread both this way and this way. All right, now, <clears throat> so as long as we understand that 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 um, process of taking a, um, the positive and negative charges and swapping them is a process due to the sodium and potassium switching places and so forth and so on. So um, if we were to consider that this is the, the oops, this is the SA node over here, okay, and then we're, this is the membrane and then this is the AB node, we know that it starts off uh, as a positive on the outside and a negative on the inside, and as we, um, let's say this SA node fires, the relative voltage change across the membrane uh, changes because the sodium has rushed in and the pot potassium has rushed out. <clears throat> so normally in the heart, <clears throat> The SA node is here, AB node is here, and the SA node fires and spreads waves of depolarization through intranodal pathways, but does not cross the AV barrier, this AV septum here, because it is a good insulator, okay, <clears throat> and doesn't have um, the ability to conduct electricity across. This is beneficial because as this SA node fires, we want all the electricity to um, simultaneously depolarize the atria and then go through the AV node and the bundle of Hiss and into the Purkinje system because uh, once it gets through here, we want it to um, depolarize the ventricles without going back up. Now you can have pathological conditions where, let's say this is the heart, this is the AV node, I mean, SA AV node, and you can have a gap right here where um, there is the loss kind of of that uh, normal insulatory function of the AV septum. And generally speaking, this gap right here is known as the bundle of Kent. And so what happens is as the SA node fires, then it sends a wave of depolarization down like it would normally, okay, and across the left atrium as well. And it, as it goes through the AV node, it goes through normal pathways, but it also re-enters the circuit here at the bundle of Kent and re-stimulates the SA node. And this gives you a condition, a type of SVT, a supraventricular tachycardia known as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. So that is um, a character, uh, I mean, a, a characteristic finding of, of Wolf-Parkinson-White. You have a shortened PRI. So you have a short PRI and uh, a delta wave, and we'll talk about those in, in a later lectures. But I just wanted to show you the importance of this AV septum here and why it's necessary to be intact all the way across. All right, so um, if we can erase this. Um, so let's talk about how the node fires, each node fires, and what that correlates to on the EKG. So we know that this is the heart. And I'm going to pause here every once in a while and switch colors just so it doesn't get uh, you know, terribly confusing. We agree that up here in the top right-hand corner is the SA node, and then somewhere here in the middle is the AV node, and it has the bundle of Hiss, and then it separates into a right bundle branch, and then a septal, an anterior, and a posterior left uh, fascicle, and all those are parts of the left bundle, uh, or left bundle branch. <clears throat> so... Um, essentially what's going to happen is if we were to take 
the heart and divide it into quadrants again, just so we can have some uh, definition here. All right. Generally, what's going to happen is on your EKG, <clears throat> your SA node will fire and it will depolarize the entire uh, atrium. Okay, and it'll also do the left atrium, and those are transmitted via a bundle of tissue called Bachmann's bundle, and um, <clears throat> that is characteristic on the EKG of a P wave. Okay, P wave symbolizes atrial depolarization. It does not symbolize atrial contraction because you can have a condition known as PEA, which is pulseless electrical activity. Uh, years ago, it was called electromechanical disassociation. But this is the newer term. This is the term used in uh, ACLS. So you can have a beautiful EKG, but nothing's going on with the heart. And so that's a condition where um, you're having just electrical activity. So be aware that the only way to know that your patient is actually alive is to actually touch the patient, generate a blood pressure on him, or, or get a, a a pulse. Okay, so for right now, we'll assume our patient is in fact alive, and because the SA node fired and spread atrial depolarization waves across both atria simultaneously, you get a P wave. All right. Then <clears throat> what happens is then you have what's called um, this little segment right here is uh, a PR segment. So an interval is any wave plus a segment. Okay any wave plus a segment. So this right here is a PRI. Normally it's three to five small boxes, small boxes, or 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. Now the reason I know that is because a little box on EKG is worth 0 0.04 seconds. If I multiply that times three, I get 0 0.12 and multiply times five, you get 0 0.2. So my point is <clears throat> the reason the PR exists, the reason it's an R, is because this is the beginning of the R wave in the QRS. The, re, uh, the reason the PRI exists is because once these action potentials arrive at the AV node, the AV node holds them for a small, brief, uh, minute second so that it gives it time, the ventricles time to feel. Um, without the uh, the, the AV valves open up and blood goes into the ventricles by gravity, but we also need the atrial kick to add that last 20 or 25 percent. And then what happens is um, we need to hold up the electrical impulse. So by the time all that happens, when we've gone through the PRI, then the action potential can go and proceed through the um, uh, bundle of his and bundle branches. So once that happens, once the AV node fires, we get a QRS. And the QRS is a measure of action potentials that travel from AV node to Purkinje fibers. It's this whole system right here. And normally, this is less than 0 0.12 seconds or less than three small boxes. Okay, so I'm going to put SB just for the heck of it. So a widened QRS, something that is greater than three small boxes, would indicate that there is some problem getting from the action potential from the AB node through the entire uh, Purkinje system. And <clears throat> so that would that could be a bundle branch block, it could be a, a fascicular block, it could be a number of things, and, and we'll approach those as we get uh, closer and closer to the end. And then just like everything, you know, you have your, your line of cells and, um, you know, you had them at a resting state, and then we put an action potential through them and they had this... Um, switching of the charge due to the, the sodium and potassium switching places, but you do you know you're going to have to um, go back to the normal resting state so that you can receive another action potential, which means this process of switching from the negative on the outside to um, relative to the inside is a process of depolarization. When you reset, you are repolarizing, okay, or repolarization. <clears throat> So on the EKG, repolarization is indicated by a T wave. Okay. Now, one last thing about um, this particular EKG is that we have identified most parts with the exception of this little spot right here. That's the ST segment, ST segment. ST segment is directly related to whether um, – uh, the heart tissue is suffering some sort of injury or ischemia. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'll, I'll just tell you this right now. Um, <clears throat> a condition where you have ST depression, let's say that was the baseline, and you have ST depression, that indicates ischemia. And then if you have ST, whoops, 
don't look at that one. S T elevation. All right. Then that, and so this was the baseline, and you can see how it's elevated. That indicates infarction. Okay, and you can see how these look like little tombstones. So if you ever hear somebody say that they're tombstoning, that is not good. It means there are signs of infarction. And so you'll have to get to like uh, EKG part five, four or five to talk about um, what actually, where you would see these and what part of the heart you're actually looking at. So I hope that helps to establish a small foundation as to um, why we look at these um, uh, particular uh, EKG findings and leads and what they mean that's going on the heart. I will mention one more thing. If I was going to measure uh, the electrical voltage across a membrane, uh, by convention, Eindhoven put a positive lead on this side and a negative lead on this side and a ground. Okay, and He hooked them all up to a battery, and, or not a battery, but a galvanometer, and um, noticed that he had an, um, an EKG being formed. If I stim cause an action potential to occur here, the depolarization wave will uh, go down this way towards the positive lead. Okay, and I'll go, I might mention this already in, in like part two, but I'll say it again here. Um, if um, the depolarization wave is headed towards the positive lead, then your deflections will be up. Okay, if it's headed away from the positive lead or the other way of saying that is towards the negative lead, your deflections will be down. That's very important when we decide about um, axis deviation and what parts of the heart uh, are being looked at by what particular lead. So keep that in mind as you move on to um, EKG part number two.